E here comes the new Samsung S25 Ultra, a smartphone that doesn't introduce revolutionary improvements in the camera department, the display, or the battery, but still manages to surprise. In this video, I want to show you every main aspect of the device so you can see it with your own eyes and get a concrete idea of what it's really like. The color you're seeing is titanium jack black, an exclusive color for the Ultra version. It stands out from the others for its uniform coloring across the entire body, not just the back, but also the edges, avoiding the classic contrast with silver profiles. In my opinion, this makes it a bit more understated and elegant. For the titanium structure, Samsung decided to go for a more squared off shape this year, both in the edges and corners. And this reminds me a lot of my previous S24 Plus, so much so that it almost looks like a zoomed in version of it. It's a really well thought out design choice that I like a lot because it offers great ergonomics. It fits very well in hand, feeling manageable and compact. Surely, this is thanks to Samsung's new efforts in making this model lighter and thinner compared to the S24 Ultra. In fact, its dimensions have slightly shrunk and its weight has dropped from 232 grams to 218 grams. I don't know how they managed to do it, but despite its generous size, it doesn't feel heavy or uncomfortable, making daily use more convenient. The display also plays an important role. It now moves to 6.9 inches, similar to what Apple did with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, further reducing the bezels to expand the viewing area. The result is truly excellent, thanks to the stunning display with its always anti-reflective coating, featuring vibrant colors and well-balanced contrasts, all at a 120 hertz refresh rate. Additionally, the brightness reaches 2600 nits, exactly like the previous model, but still with top tier quality and details, so much so that you don't feel the absence of further improvements. For the Ultra version, the classic stylus remains, but there's an interesting detail. In my color variant, the pen has a completely different shade from the body. In this case, it looks cream colored. The real novelty, however, is that Samsung has removed the Bluetooth connection, probably because few users were using it, or maybe for other reasons, but despite this, the S Pen still works perfectly, offering smooth writing with no hindrance at all. What could really make a difference on this S25 Ultra are the major updates introduced with Android 15 and the new version of Samsung One UI 7, which brings several interesting customizations. For example, now the notification panel is separate from the system buttons. There are more widgets with improved customization. You can enlarge app folders on the home screen. And for those who love order, all apps can be displayed in alphabetical order on a single page. Lots of updates, but the real focus for Samsung has been the implementation of artificial intelligence, thanks to its collaboration with Google and its Gemini Assistant. According to the statements, Gemini integrates with many phone apps allowing interaction with emails, calendar, notes, or reminders through simple voice commands. A really interesting innovation because it could change the way we use smartphones. However, at the moment, I haven't been able to get Gemini to work as Samsung advertised in my tests. I still can't make it communicate with the apps, but it's probably just a matter of time and future updates. Another interesting novelty is the now brief function designed to create a sort of smart daily planner that helps you organize your day better. It provides weather information, accompanies you with your music playlists, depending on the time of day and offers support to better manage your commitments. In short, the possibilities of using artificial intelligence on this device are truly vast. And Samsung has also gone all out in the camera department. For example, the ability to edit photos has been expanded or you can even create images from scratch starting from a simple sketch or a text description with a really nice result. But power all this, there's one component that particularly impressed me, Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 8 Elite processor. And here I wanna pause for a moment because I believe this chip, combined with Samsung's hardware integration, is truly a masterpiece of engineering. From the benchmarks, you can see that it's significantly more powerful in both single core and multi-core compared to the S24 Ultra. Important numbers which I've had the chance to test personally over the past few days. I tried pushing it to the limit by opening numerous applications, launching heavy games, and using the new AI features. Every action ran smoothly with excellent fluidity. For example, I tested the Samsung DeX feature on a 4K monitor, trying to push it with heavy multitasking and multiple apps open simultaneously. 
no slowdowns, no hesitation. The same goes for overheating, even under stress. The Galaxy S25 Ultra manages to maintain acceptable temperatures without excessive heat buildup. All this makes me believe that this smartphone is ready for the future with an excellent balance between hardware and software, and most importantly, a good chance of remaining high performing for all seven years of updates promised by Samsung. Moving on to the camera system, there haven't been major changes. The main cameras remain the same as the S24 Ultra, with the only exception being the ultra wide lens, which goes from 12 to 50 megapixels. An interesting detail that definitely improves photo quality and updates the camera setup, delivering high level results with good focus, quick shots, and notably more natural and true to life colors. As for professional video recording, a log mode has been added, allowing for greater detail capture and more control in post-production. An interesting feature though, probably not widely used by the average user. Talking about battery life, it's still too early for a definitive verdict, but overall I can say that while maintaining a 5000 mAh capacity, it performs very well. Here the processor plays a key role, besides ensuring great power, it optimizes energy consumption excellently allowing the phone to comfortably last through the day, if not longer. Regarding connectivity, including Wi-Fi, mobile data, and network reception, I haven't encountered any major issues. As for the speakers, the sound quality is good, clean, and understandable, but compared to my iPhone 16 Pro, I notice a certain lack of depth. These are the main features of this device. In the coming days, I'll continue testing it and will bring you more details on how it performs in everyday life. So, if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.